Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now this past week, the WHO just changed their position on the recommendation regarding MIA vaccine and pregnancy. Now also, two of my viewers here, Hamo and Alexandra, also left a comment asking me to discuss on this topic. So I think this week is the best week to talk about this particular topic. So before we get to the topic of discussion today, I would like to first thank all of my viewers and subscribers for helping my channel to reach the 500 subscriber milestones. Now my videos are now reaching more people than ever before and I'm so happy that a lot of you are watching my video and finding it useful. So the purpose of this channel is it really is to connect people with the scientific fact. This includes my regular COVID-19 update and as well as many other topics coming up later on. My idea is that if I can understand a topic, you can also understand. So if you want to learn more about scientific facts, please consider subscribing to the channel. This channel needs your help to reach more people. Now without further ado, let's dive into the topic today. All right, so let's look at what do we know and not know about the mRNA vaccines and pregnancy. And first, like always, a disclaimer, this video is my summary and interpretation of publicly available scientific information. This video does not serve as any advice regarding treatment, diagnosis, and prevention of any diseases. And if I mention any companies in the videos, I do not have affiliations with them. First, let's look at the background. Now, both mRNA vaccines use lipid nanoparticles or LMP to deliver the mRNA. In both vaccine trials, they did not deliberately include pregnant or breastfeeding individuals, but it turned out 6 individuals in the Moderna vaccine group and 12 individuals in the Pfizer vaccine group become pregnant during the trials and these pregnancies are still ongoing. Now, Currently, the available animal studies data showed no complications with the vaccines, however, there are limited available safety data in human. So before we can answer how mRNA vaccines can affect pregnancy, let's first look at the important biological component in pregnancy, which is the placenta. We'll look at what can cross the placenta, how the size of the lipid nanoparticle in relation to substance that can cross the placenta, what do we know about the interaction between LMP and placenta in past studies, and lastly, what are the questions that need to be answered by pharmaceutical companies before claiming a more certain safety statement regarding COVID vaccine and pregnancy. So fact number one, what can cross the placenta? So what you're looking here is a figure trying to illustrate how the fetus is connecting to the placenta. Now in fact, placenta is a biological barrier that separates the fetus circulations to the maternal circulations. Now in fact, many small lipid soluble drugs can cross the placenta. For those science folk out there watching this video, we are talking about molecules that are less than 1000 delta in molecular weight. Now, antibody can bind to specific receptors and enter the placenta tissues. An article published a few days ago in the Journal of the American Medical Association showed IgG antibodies were found in the cord blood of COVID recovered mother and no newborns had infections. However, the levels of transferred antibodies do vary among different studies. Now, Let's look at the lipid nanoparticle and how the size of the LMP in relation to the substance that can cross the placenta. What you're looking at here are different illustrations showing you the relative size of different molecules and the viruses here. Now on the left hand side, it is a typical illustration of an antibody here showing you different size. Okay, these size are in nanometers. Okay, so that's 10 to the 9th of a meter. So it's very, very tiny. Okay, but still significantly bigger than any of the traditional drugs that we talk about. Okay, so for the antibody, we're looking about at a, at a type of a protein ranging from 14 nanometer in diameter. Okay, now here in the center figure, here is a electron microscope 
graph that is released by CDC illustrating or showing you what the SARS-CoV-2 virus look like and its size. So based on the scale the CDC picture provided and the uh, size that is showing on the figure here, we can tell the diameter of the SARS-CoV-2 virus it's about 100 nanometer in, in the width. Okay. Now looking at the nanoparticles that encapsulate our mRNA in the vaccines here. Now this is a figure that I adopted from a review article that I used to prepare this video today. Now the mRNA size usually range in about 50 nanometer but if you are including the nanoparticle outside uh, that was encapsulating this uh, molecule, we're looking at an overall average size of 80 to 100 nanometer. So in fact, these nanoparticles are kind of similar. Now after we look at the LMP itself, what do we know about the interaction between LMP and the placenta? Let's look at some of the past study summaries. So after reading several newly published review article regarding lipid nanoparticle and placenta. Here are some of the general information I want to share with you all. Now many past studies use lipid nanoparticle as a vehicle to deliver drugs. In fact, these lipid nanoparticle are used to prevent drugs that are normally toxic to the fetus from entering to the placenta. So they are helpful in a way. And in fact, size, surface charge, and material of the lipid nanoparticle can affect the penetrations uh, very much. So depending on what they're made of, the amounts that can cross the placenta do vary. And it turned out a positively charged liposome or lipid nanoparticle were very minimally transferred. Now looking at the nanoparticle here we have with the mRNA vaccines, it contains both positively charged and neutral but ionizable lipids in their formulations. So uh, here is the questions the scientists need to look at or at least tell us if these lipid nanoparticles do cross or how much they cross the placenta. So here comes to what remains to be answered. So here are a list of things that I think we all need to look very closely. First is the result of the ongoing pregnant animal study data from Pfizer. Okay, We want to know how much or if there's any penetrations of the lipid nanoparticle across the placenta. And also the follow-up result of the 18 individuals who were pregnant during the clinical trials. Are they okay? How did it turn out? Okay, And currently WHO just changed their uh, positions on the recommendations of the vaccines for uh, pregnant women. So now they do not believe there are specific risks that would outweigh the benefits. Now, very importantly, individuals really need to weigh their own risk and benefit when considering vaccination. So here are the take home message of this week. Now the placenta is a barrier that allowed mostly only the small molecule drugs and antibodies to enter the fecal circulations. And very recently a paper indicated anti-COVID-19 antibodies have been found in the cord blood of recovered mother. Now this suggests that mother that are receiving the vaccines, the, there are chances for the antibodies to enter the cord blood as well. The lipid and nanoparticles are actually relatively large particles that do not readily cross the placenta. It really depends on the exact compositions of these particles. And available pregnant animal data regarding mRNA vaccine studies looks okay at this point. And we really need to look at the follow-up studies on the 18 individuals that were pregnant during the trial. Now, it is very crucial to weigh individual risk and benefits when considering COVID vaccines. So to learn more, here are the link for the paper that I look up for 
today's video. I also have these link down in the description box below. Okay, first one is the WHO news statement, and I've also looked at some of the preclinical study paper published by Moderna and several other review articles that dive deep into nanoparticles in pregnancy and how placenta and nanoparticle mediate drug delivery during pregnancy, and as well as a very new review article talking about nanomaterial delivery system for mRNA vaccines. And I also have these linked down in the description box below since many of these articles are actually open access and you can access them for free. So I hope this video is able to provide additional information regarding pregnancy and COVID vaccines. Now that is all I have for you this week and I hope you to stay safe again for another week and I'll see you next Sunday again 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another COVID-19 update. Bye. Thank you.